Good evening, everyone. On behalf of myself and Life Vest Inside, we are wishing you all a happy World Kindness Week. And let's keep it going. A World Kindness Year and a World Kindness Decade. World Kindness Forever. Kindness is everlasting. Just keep it going. People think sometimes we have to do these huge, big things. It's very easy to be kind to somebody else. And when you do, that has a rippling effect. And that's what this story is all about. This story goes all the way back to the beginning of Project Cure. This is our logo in the back. It's a black and white handshake, which just represents diversity. It says increase the peace in Hebrew and, and in English. <clears throat> and C, I don't know if you can see on the bottom, stands for communication, understanding, respect, and education. But let me kick it off the way it should be done. See communication across the nation. Let's all sit down and have a conversation. You understanding. I listen to you. You listen to me. We can work things out in harmony. I respect each other's feelings. Respect who you are. Respect each other's cultures and we'll all go far. E for education, a point of elevation. It keeps on going even after graduation. So that is the C-U-R-E of Project Cure. So I wanted to share with you our beginnings and something very profound that occurred and how that has had an effect on me and my daily life. And I thank all of those who are involved with the Project Cure. And it just illustrates the importance and the significance of an act of kindness. In fact, what you might say is a random act of kindness. I love that expression practice random acts of kindness. It's a great expression. And it really is, that is what the antidote for practice, for this idea of random acts of violence, the cure is random acts of kindness. And that's just like you turn on light and the darkness just automatically dissipates. So we began, by the way, this is Dr. Laz, and I'm coming to you from MIA, that's Miami, in the 305. Okay, that's the area code. So we began shortly after race riots tore apart the community in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. That's a very deep ethnic kind of community. There's the Chabad Hasidic community. There's a very strong, large African-American community, Caribbean American community. And there was actually very little communication that was going on. And so just the riots took everyone by surprise. And uh, it was three, four days of rioting on the streets and vehicles being turned over and burned, rocks being thrown, bottles being thrown. It was chaos. And, and that community where I lived looked like a war zone. So I was selected by the Hasidic community to be the liaison with the black community. And initially I, I met a gentleman by the name of Richard Green, long uh, dreadlocks, African-American. And I felt like I was meeting my long lost soul brother, a brother from another mother. The only thing we disagreed on was he's a big New York Jet, Jets fan, football team, and I'm a big Buffalo Bills fan. That's my hometown. And that was really the extent of our disagreement. And other than that, we just hit it off. We, uh, we spoke, we we're both product of the 60s. We we're both kind of these uh, ex-hippies walking around with, with, but still with a lot of those values of increase the peace and, and loving kindness and unity. We, you know, these are things once you get tuned into that, you never, it never leaves you. And you never leave those those important voices inside your soul. So the community did look like a war zone. And I remember after the the riots sort of calmed down. Uh, well, there's two things. One is the mayor came to meet with the Chabad Rebbe, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and he said to the Rebbe something to the effect like, I'm the leader of my community. And by the way, the mayor at that point was uh, Mayor David Dinkins, who's African-American. And you know, here you have the Rebbe, uh, this uh, Hasidic uh, leader 
of this huge worldwide Hasidic movement, the Chabad community throughout the world, uh, coming from Russia. And so he tells the Rebbe, I'm the leader of my community, you're the leader of your, your community, let's work together to bring peace to both communities. And when I first heard that, I probably nodded my head like that's a beautiful statement, you know, that makes a lot of sense. But it's just so interesting how I think you, you need sometimes a person with a spiritual type of vision and approach to give you a new paradigm, a new, a new paradigm shift, you know, they call it. And so the Rebbe said to the mayor, he said, Mr. Mayor, we're not two communities. And he went like this, we're one community under one administration, under one God. And so that became uh, sort of our modus operandum. We, we are one community under one administration, under one God. But really, if you think about it, the entire human species is one community. We are one united community, whether we like it or not. Uh, so diversity is beautiful. You know, that's what brings variety. It's a spice of life. That's awesome. And can you imagine how boring it would be if we all looked exactly alike and dressed alike and thought alike and acted alike and we might as well be robots. So I always refer to it as unity through diversity or unity with diversity. And that's a powerful thing. But here's a story I wanted to share with you about this idea of kindness. So a uh, friend of mine went um, to the Rebbe shortly after the riots, maybe a week after the riots occurred. And he told the Rebbe that... Um, he wanted to bring arms and weapons into the community that uh, he said, ah, you, you know, you guys, you Hasidim are all about peace, love, peace, love and happiness, bringing light to the world, but you don't know how to fight. So I'm going to bring in weapons to the community and arm everyone. So the Rebbe told him no way, not a chance, no how. He wants no violence in the community, no violence perpetrated in his name, God forbid. And so this guy said to the Rebbe, so what's your idea to make the make Crown Heights a better community, a more peaceful community? And the Rebbe told him five words that will knock your socks off. Five words. The Rebbe said to him, say hello to your neighbors. Five words. Powerful words. So this individual told one of my best friends who called me up and said, this guy thinks your Rebbe is the most naive person on the planet. That You know what? What kind of statement is that for the, the rabbi to make? Say hello to your neighbors. Like, that's a cure for the ills of the community. Nobody's talking to each other. We all are harboring these stereotypes and negative thoughts about each other. That's not going to do any good. And so, you know, I thought about it and I decided to let, I'm going to put it into practice. Now, I had on my block, I live on a block that's barely racially mixed in Crown Heights. And there was a couple neighbors, don't ask me why, I don't know. But for some reason, we never said hello to each other. We very often would pass each other. I'd be on my way to work. I would see this individual outside doing stuff in his garden, taking out the garbage, whatever. And we never, like, even acknowledged each other. And in a way, I wanted to, but I felt like he was looking at me like in a negative way you know the stereotypes were probably in my own head but i felt that's what i felt and same thing with this other neighbor and both were african african american um both wore a lot of times the dashikis you know the african garb um and uh kinte cloth this was made for me by my co-singer and my project here music group reverend paul Chandler. this was made for me by his mother may she rest in peace and so it's a very special, very special garment for me. And so I decided I'm going to start saying hello. Let's see what happens. And now this is after we lived in the same, on the same block for maybe two years already. And I, okay, I just said, I said, good morning. Good morning, how you doing? Sometimes in the beginning, just get a little head nod. Same thing with the other gentleman. I'd see him coming home from work usually. How you doing? How are you? Hope you had a good day. Sometimes get a head nod. Sometimes you say thank you. All right. My, this went on for a couple weeks. A couple weeks goes by. And 
I remember coming home from work and uh, my uh, my wife comes out. She says to me, I'm so proud of you. I'm like, okay, cool. what I do? And she said, you're taking the garbage and you're putting it at where the garbage cans go, the empty cans go, and I don't even have to bug you about it. So I said to her, ah, oh, come on. You've, uh, you've been doing that. I noticed for like two weeks, you've been doing that. She said to me, you've been doing that. I said, no, no, come on, for real. Just, uh, you've been doing it. Anyhow, we both, we both kept saying, no, we didn't do it. But I know that I didn't do it. So I thought for sure she did it. And she just didn't want to, uh, you know, accept the credit. She was just being humble. And she probably thought the same thing of me. <laughs> so it wasn't until I came out one morning. I was late on my way to work, late. And I see this guy who I just started saying hello to after two years. He's bringing my garbage cans out from where they were to be taken out to the front of the house. He was the one who was taking my garbage cans back and forth. And I was, I was astounded. You know, I said, oh, no, that's not necessary. Thank you. You know, you don't have to do that. The gentleman on the other side, uh, he started bringing over every Friday afternoon in a, in a bag, it'd be in front of our door, a bag of wine and some cakes and stuff like that. And it said, happy Sabbath to, uh, to Dr. Laz and family. And what was this from? This was from just saying hello to your neighbors and not, not doing business as usual. And what a difference it made. I have to tell you that it changed the vibe of the whole block. So they then started inviting me to, some, to meet some of their family. And they had, they had a Christmas party. Come on and say hello to my family. And they would say, I know you can't eat anything here, but, you know, we, we, have, we can have a cold drink. And I did the same. We did the same back with them. We made a model Seder in our house. And they came and we had a sukkah party in our house. That's the uh, festival that celebrates the harvest where you make these booths outside and you have your meals out there for like eight days or a week straight. And so it changed the vibe of the whole block. And there was another uh, African-American lady on the corner, same thing. She started inviting me to her political meetings. Um, even though I'm not such a political person, my, my politics piece is my... Uh, my politics and kindness is something that, you know, I try to, to live by. But I leave you with, with these thoughts that sometimes we think it has to be this major thing. Um, uh, you know, that's why I, I give it up for Life Fest Inside and, and uh, Dance for Kindness, what you guys are doing. That is worldwide. And that is awesome. But I want to empower all of you people listening out there, no matter what age you are, no matter what you look like, just reach out to another person. It doesn't even have to be the neighbor on your block. Reach out to the person who you're passing on the street, who you're sitting next to on the subway. You know, give up your seat. Say hello. Just say hello. Say hello, and that very often will lead to a conversation. Suddenly, there's no such thing as the other side anymore. You don't start seeing the Hatfields versus the McCoys. You don't start seeing like, oh, I'm in this group. He or she is in that group. I wave this flag. He or she waves this flag. No, we are all one community. We're all one community under one God. One God made us all. So I just want to say to you, increase the peace. Empower yourself. And whoever you meet, wherever you are, like the Beatles sang in that great song, all you need is love. That one line in there, nowhere you can be that isn't where you're meant to be. I love that line. So wherever you are, that's where you're meant to be. And you're, we're meant to uplift each other, right? We're meant to help each other out. Bring a smile to each other's faces. And it's easy. Say hello to your neighbors. Say hello to your friends walking down the street. All right? Piece of cake. Nothing to it. And that's, that's called, what, what it's called in psychological terms is you are validating someone's existence. You're making them feel that they're worthwhile and that they're important. And it's an easy thing to do. Increase the peace, everyone. Remember, see communication across the nation. Let's all sit down and have a conversation. You understanding. I listen to you. You listen to me. We can work things out in harmony. Ah, respect each other's feelings. Respect who you are. Respect each other's cultures and we'll all go far. 
Efer education, the point of elevation, it keeps on growing, going even after graduation. Practice those random acts of kindness. Peace in. Thank you.